The Pasuk says in Tehillim, Kol Orchot Adonai Chesed Ve'emet. It's Perek Chavhe. The Sfaradim say this Perek after Vidui by Nefilat Apaim. David HaMelech says, Kol Orchot Hashem. All the roads to Hashem of God, Hesed ve'emet. They are kindness and there's truth. I'd like to spend a few minutes tonight to find out exactly what David Melech was talking about. And as we will see, it's very much related to the parasha that we read this morning. I'd like to first bring you back a few parashiyot. Parashat Vayera. Abraham Avinu is an old man who just had his brit milah. He's in pain. As a result, the Pasuk says that Hashem made it very hot. So hot that no travelers would be able to walk. And therefore, Abraham would have a few hours of rest from his daily schedule of hosting guests. But then the Pasuk tells us that Abraham was actually in pain. He was more in pain about not having guests than he was because of his physical pain. So what did God do? He sent three angels to come visit him. These angels came in the form of humans. So Abraham did not know they were angels. They thought, he thought they were regular travelers, traveling in the heat. And Abraham went and he ran after them. There's a few questions on this story. I know everybody probably has heard of this story. But there's a few difficult questions on this story. Number one. We know the way God runs the world. He runs it alpi teva. Teva means nature. God does not run a world with miracles where things are changing every moment. There's a seder, there's an order to this world. Miracles are done only on a need basis. When there's a necessity. Like when the Jewish people were becoming a nation in Egypt, there was a necessity for miracles. Or miracles based on the situation. But miracles are not the normal way of God running this world. An angel coming to visit us is considered not nature. That's a miracle. In this situation, it doesn't seem that a miracle was needed. Because Abraham Avinu could have gotten regular humans to visit him. All God had to do is lower the temperature. The reason why they weren't coming is because it was hot. If God would lower the temperature, then they would come like a normal day. So why did God leave it hot? He left it to be very hot and He sent angels. Why not leave the world in its normal nature? What was the great necessity here for a miracle? And perhaps a bigger question... The second question, we know that why three angels were sent, Hachamim tell us. One of them came to give Abraham and Sarah the great news that they're going to have a child after so many years, tens of years without children. The second one came to heal Abraham Avinu. As we know, every angel could only do one mission because the essence of an angel is his mission. That's what he's about. And the third one came to destroy Sodom. Why he stopped by Abraham is a different class. So the question is, if God wanted to send these angels in order for each one to do their job, what's the connection to them visiting him? Meaning, if God wants visitors for Abraham, 
and he wanted to do it through angels. So, okay, for whatever reason. So send an angel. Send an angel that's free, that has no other job but to visit Abraham. Why would he pick the same angel that's going to tell him the news and to heal him to be the one that's going to be his guest? David Amelech says in Tehillim, Olam Chesed Yibaneh. The world was created, was built on kindness. Simply, it means that the only reason why we exist in this world, we did not make ourselves. This is something we all can agree to. God made us. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need anything from us. Whatever we, we can give Him is because He gave it to us first. There's nothing we can do for Him. So why did God make the world? He made it because God has a midah of kindness. Kindness means doing something for someone other than yourself. Olam hesed yibaneh, the world was created because of God's midah of hesed. But there's another meaning to that pasuk. It's not just why the world was created. It's the way the world will be built. Every person that was created has their own world to build. All of us came into this world as infants and we need to build ourselves. We need to build our actions. We need to build our wisdom. We need to build our character. We need to build ourselves in so many ways. Olam hesed yibaneh. The most important, the most critical area that's going to help us build our world, each one of us, is the midah of hesed, of kindness, of doing for others, just like we see by God. We are here to emulate God. And the greatest way we can emulate Him is by creating and doing for others like He did for us. That's, by the way, we find the two areas of destruction of the Torah. Mabul and Sedom. Both of them had to do with lack of kindness. When there's no kindness in the world, there's no reason for the world to exist. The Hafez Haim writes that if we look at the world, we will see that the way the world was built we could learn so much from the way God made the world that hesed is a critical part of this world. Because if you look at every single person, we all, all of us, need somebody sometime in life. When we're born, we're infants as humans, we cannot survive on our own. We need someone to help us. We need someone to feed us, someone to protect us, someone to help us walk. And then we get older, we need someone to give us money if we're poor. Or we need a loan if we're needy for that time. Or we need someone who's going to help us physically if we're not feeling well, God forbid. A person has a simha. You have a wedding. You need people to celebrate with you. You can't celebrate by yourself. Lo alen of a person is in avelut. He needs someone to come visit. A person gets older. He needs help from his children, from his friends. So throughout our lifetime, we always need people. We need someone to come and help us. This is not by accident. When there's poor people in the world, people who need money or advice or other things, it's not by accident. The world would not be perfect like some others say. If there would be no poverty, it would be a perfect world. No, it wouldn't. God knows how to make a perfect world. He made the world just right. Because the purpose of this world and the way we're going to build ourselves in this world is through opportunities of kindness. If everyone was self-sufficient and no one ever needed our help, how would we be able to do for others? So therefore God made every person have the ability to help other people in so many ways with advice, with money, with physical help, with a kind word, with a smile. Olam hesed yibane. The world will be built on our kindness. In fact, Rabbi Simlai says that the Torah begins with hesed and ends with hesed. 
In the beginning, we find that God made clothing for Adam and Hava. God himself made them clothing. That's Hassan. At the end of the Torah, we find that Moshe Rabbeinu was buried by God himself. By Yikbor Oto Bagai. We seek kindness again. Our rabbis ask, what is Rabbi Simlai coming to teach us? Every child could open up the Torah and see that at the beginning there's kindness and at the end there's kindness. What exactly is the great Hidush of Rabbi Simlai? So they answer, that Rabbi Simlai was telling us something about the entire Torah. If you open a book and you see the beginning is kindness and the end is kindness, so you understand that the entire Sefer is about Hesed. One of the great rabbis of the last few hundred years, Rabbi Yerucham, he writes, he says, and I'll say it in my own words, he says, imagine you have a person who has, God forbid, no finger. So you would say, that's a person with no finger. A person has no leg. So it's a person with no leg, with no eye, with no eye. It's a person without an eye or without two eyes, but it's a person. What would you say if there's a person who had no spine? What would you say about that person? A person who has no spine. Would you say that's a person without a spine? It's not a person. If you have no spine, you're not a person. This is what Rabbi Simlai means. That the, word, the Torah begins with chesed and ends with chesed. He's teaching us that just like in the physical, there's a spine that's the main part of the person. So too, the main part of the spiritual person is hesed, which means if a person has all the mitzvot but is missing one mitzvah, he's not so good in this area or that area, he's still called a spiritual person. But if you're missing hesed, if you're missing kindness in your life, if you say, you know what? Kindness is not for me. That's not my thing. I learn Torah. I do this. I do that. But I don't do chesed. Shabbat. Modesty. I do all those things. Chesed is just not my area. That's not my specialty. This is a person who has no spine, which means he's got nothing. You could say that in other mitzvot, but not by chesed. Olam chesed yibaneh. 